so I'm going to introduce uh, Michael Spade. I don't think he needs any introduction, but um, I'll do it anyways. Uh, so I read Michael's book uh, fairly recently and um, really had uh, a great time with it and, and really enjoyed his take on viewing transformations as systems and looking at, at, at it sort of from a bigger picture perspective. I, mm -hmm. I really uh, like that take on it and it sort of helped give me some new ideas on how to um, sort of sort of apply some of those things to the transformations that I'm a part of. So um, I've really enjoyed that. Um, and I was able to have a conversation with Michael uh, a couple of months ago now, I think, about uh, doing this talk here today um, and really enjoyed that as well. We, we talked a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about his take on these things and um, how to apply them. And I think that it's, uh, it's all really good stuff. And I'm really excited to hear the the whole talk here and uh, the conversation that comes after it. So um, with no further ado, Michael Spade, um, on to you. Thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate that. And uh, thank you to uh, the Buffalo Agile Group and, um, and all of you for showing up and uh, giving your evening to this. Can you see my slides OK? Yes. Yes. Great, right, thank you so much. <clears throat> so this uh, is titled Transformation Frustration, <clears throat> why it's not working as well as you'd like and what you can and can't do about it. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we'll see if I live up to that uh, description. <clears throat> um, this is, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go over a lot of stuff from the book in a different way than I normally do or have uh, until the last few weeks. Um, <clears throat> and I'm gonna go really fast and I'm, 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 I, am, I am born to be a teacher, but I don't think I'm gonna teach very much tonight. I'm, I'm really, um, I was just listening to an integral talk that was about uh, <clears throat> art. I really think that I'm going to try to give a performance tonight in a certain way and not, not in a conventional way, but it's more about <clears throat> how I can help make you feel rather than all the, you know, I, I'm not teaching you this stuff. I'm not going to get down. You're not going to understand some things if you haven't been exposed to it already. And that's not my intent is to, it's, it's to, it's to help you feel a certain way or, or see a certain perspective or get an impression of a certain perspective rather than um, per se, like like learning it like that you could teach it or you get tested on it or something. Hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Michael Hammond and I have just put out an announcement of uh, launching the Collective Edge, uh, our organization, and we're gonna be making some more announcements soon about that. Um, so we're, we're starting to really get momentum. And the, the first business line we had was the School of Integral Sense Making in Action, which is a transformational leader, enterprise coach kind of school. You know, um, <clears throat> we uh, sort of wrote the book on, on team coaching, you know, in the, in the two thousand starting in 2010 and, you know, through about 2016, 16, 17. Um, and then we sold ACI and we moved into, well, so, uh, I moved into enterprise coaching, Michael Hammond moved into enterprise coaching. And so now we've sort of reconstituted a school for enterprise coaches like we did for, for team coaches. And this is our, <clears throat> this is a lot of our uh, uh, inspiration and, and uh, where we're coming from. And we, when, when we started collaborating, you know, we realized um, uh, we have to do something that synthesizes or matches up both of our uh, bodies of work. So we came up with the idea of integral sense making um, and then and action too, which is uh, <clears throat> I won't be talking about tonight. That's uh, uh, human systems dynamics that we're incorporating into our framework. <clears throat> so Michael's Michael's book on evolve agility is about how you make sense of things and um, it's uh, and how it progresses from one level to another, which I'm gonna hint at but not really talk about so much <clears throat> and and my integral framework integral agile transformation framework is trying to give the whole big picture and michael's deep dives on some of the practices to evolve consciousness and to evolve systemic uh, consciousness or complexity <clears throat> 
All right. <clears throat> um, if if uh, so, let me let me try to distinguish two kinds of questions. <clears throat> um, if you have a question that um, is taking issue with something I'm saying or giving a counterexample, I'm going to ask you to hold that until right after the talk. Um, and but if you have a question that's like tripping you up because you don't understand it and it's, it's confusing you and you're getting lost, then please ask that real time. And I, I may or may not be able to answer it, depends on what it is, but um, I'd, I'd rather do some questions as we go and have some <clears throat> level of dialogue uh, without it getting too deep, you know what I mean? Um, and, then, and then have a more leisurely Q&A at the end. Uh, how does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. All right, so uh, <clears throat> I have started to, um, how many people have seen this diagram before? I don't think I have. Um, it's uh, it's uh, Frederick Lalo's work, <clears throat> um, Reinventing Organizations, is actually executed by Peter Green. He, he's the one that drew this <clears throat> or created it, but um, <clears throat> This is originally uh, the work that's been labeled as spiral dynamics, but it was originally done by a man named Claire Graves. And when I was researching the book, um, the, the single most important book I read was, was his book, um, which is out of print and, and hard to get. Um, it's called uh, The Never Ending Quest. And it's a fabulous book. It's totally fascinating about how he discovered how these value memes hold together. So each each one is like a code for a culture, both for us individually and for the group that we want to be part of. And they have different uh, what are called they have different memes m e m e s at the in the middle of them, and they are value memes. So they're sets of interrelated values that make sense together. And and uh, the way that we act as human beings centers around one of these. 60% of us at a time are at one stage and 40, the rest of the 40% of us are between two stages. We don't, we don't, aren't centered in red and, and teal. We might have access to red if we're a teal, but we're not, we're not centered in those. So, so there, I, I say when push comes to shove, what is it that I'm going to do? And we each have a center of gravity and so do organizations typically have a center of gravity. <clears throat> and these things um, don't get along with each other fundamentally until you get to the last one, which is what's called the second tier. So let's just look at these for a minute. So think of this as, it's like um, uh, your agile toolbox is, um, has a certain uh, level to it of, of culture code. But it's my, and I don't mean just culture, I mean thinking, mindset, even, even uh, behavior or practices. <clears throat> have a color to them, have a, have a, a level to them. So this is what uh, level four looks like. This is the kind of, uh, if you see what it values, it values certainty and order and a certain sense of honor or duty and authority. Now, those things are all good. Those things are all very decent. Um, th this, is, this is what shows up uh, when, when you listen to country Western music. A lot of times, you know, uh, songs about, you know, um, uh, uh, veterans uh, getting killed or, or in, you know, the, uh, coming home to his wife in a box with a folded flag. They evoke deep emotion in us and, and sense of honor. But um, it's not a very good match. You may, maybe you're already starting to get a sense of where Agile might be. It's not a good match for your toolbox. It's a horrible match for your toolbox for the most part. As an Agilist, you may have an other toolbox that has nothing to do with that that might make you good for the, that culture code, but your Agile toolbox sucks in this regard. Um, level five, you know, likes opportunity, wants to be successful, doesn't want to be constricted by um, stupid rules, wants to break out of rules, wants to, you know, go around the org chart, wants to, you know, kind of, kind of a, you know, a, a rebellious teenage boy, certain quality. 
But and on the other hand, is is at the place of real rationality, the ability to take a true third person perspective. Amber actually doesn't have the ability to take a third person perspective. It actually doesn't truly understand what science is. That's why you have what's going on politically in the U.S. happening. Um, <clears throat> And, and success is uh, uh, achieving goals within the game. You know, success back here was, um, uh, oh, I didn't put it here. Uh-oh, oh, oh no, yeah. Conforming to the group expectations and doing your duty, right? That's what's, what is goodness there. <clears throat> so you can see that those two are not gonna get along with each other very well. They're gonna have a, they're gonna have a tense relationship now, they may exist inside of one person. One person might be moving from one level to the other, and so they're going to have a, a tempestuous experience inside, and that's what that's what we experience as when we start growing up in some way, in some developmental way. It's tempestuous for a while. It's overwhelming. You know, Michael Hammond, my uh, partner, is, is uh, going through a really, really difficult time <clears throat> in his life for a variety of reasons, just moved to to Stockholm, Sweden, um, and he's having a lot of disruption and it's creating this anxiety in him and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, he shares this regularly, so I'm not speaking out of school. Um, <clears throat> but it, it opens him up to a new possibility, but it's also, it's also really difficult and challenging. <clears throat> so level six, culture code six, now is really, really different. Uh, it values fairness and hearing all perspectives. You know, this is where uh, diversity and inclusion comes out of this value system. <clears throat> the previous value system dealt with people as objects. You are a transaction. That's why you feel when you go to a, especially a somewhat toxic uh, orange service provider, you feel like you're just a number to them. You feel dehumanized. You know what I'm talking about? <clears throat> Here we go, we sort of bend over backwards the other way and we try to, um, <clears throat> we want to have everything be by consensus. Who am I to take the leadership of the group? When, when Claire Graves studied people at this level, they couldn't get started on the projects that he gave them because they, they sat around in a circle and everybody had to have their point of view and they, people didn't agree and, they, and nobody could take leadership. And so they, they sputtered. <clears throat> they, they valued each other's opinion. They had a better people space. They probably had a much safer space. They felt treated as a person. That's a huge advantage. And it might not be um, uh, very efficient sometimes. So can you see how <clears throat> four, five, and six could be at war with each other? Does that make sense? Shake your head no if, if you don't, if it's not making sense. Okay. <clears throat> I'm mainly looking for. <clears throat> so what, what do you think? Well, uh, uh, everybody put into the chat, please, level four, five, or six, for what's the agile toolbox for the most part? What, what, what level is it most closely mapped to? <clears throat> four, five, or six, please, everybody. All right, so everybody's been to my class. <clears throat> Six is the right answer. <laughs> the answer that I think, <clears throat> whoops. Okay, so, so now seven, <clears throat> um, which, you're, which you, you, it's very unlikely that you've been in a, in a teal organization. It's possible, but it's very unlikely, <clears throat> in my opinion, um, and, and my experience. The... Um, <clears throat> A teal organization feels different because it's not organized per se to make money like orange is or per se to live in, by, you know, progressive values like empowerment or inclusion or uh, uh, consensus or whatever. <clears throat> it exists to accomplish something, to accomplish a mission that people tend to feel um, really inspired by. And what a technique of a teal organization is um, to 
train you, let you be exposed to the um, culture, and then pay you to leave. Because if you're tempted by the money they would give you to leave, you're not the right fit. You're, the purpose isn't important enough to you. You know, you couldn't you couldn't pay me to leave the collective edge. I, you, know, you couldn't offer me a job that I would say, no, oh yeah, oh, I'd love to make <clears throat> a million and a half a year. I, I wouldn't be interested in that. I mean, I, I'd probably be tempted by it on a certain level, but I wouldn't do it. You know, the the important the the importance of the purpose of this organization that we just started is too important to me. <clears throat> um, another example, um, we're we're experimenting with this at the Collective Edge is is what what uh, Lalo called the um, the advice process. So within somebody's sphere of authority of kind of of what their role involves and, and what it um, you know, should be able to do. <clears throat> Uh, we, we have a rule that a person is able to make a decision themselves as long as they uh, get the input or the perspective of anybody that might be affected, stakeholders. They don't have to listen to those, or they, they, they have to listen. They don't have to agree with those people and they don't have to take their advice. They can completely disagree. They can ignore everybody's advice. But they have to take accountability for the fact that they did that, right? I'm, it's my autonomy, it's my sovereignty that's making this decision, and I'm going to do it within the best of my integrity, and you're, you're going to hold me accountable to whether it was a good decision or not, and what I, how I, what I learned, if it was a bad decision, you know, what I'm going to, how I'm going to correct. Uh, it's a, it's a, I mean, I can tell you, <clears throat> it's a way more vulnerable place to be. I mean, when, when we do it, I find the green in me rising up to say, well, I want everybody to agree with me. I want everybody to align. I want everybody to be happy and, you know, really in consensus about this. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, <laughs> if you can get it. But if it's the wrong decision, no. So you have to be, you have to be in a different place with yourself that you could trust yourself that much, that you could love yourself that much, honestly, um, to, to respect your um, your decisions and you taking the consequences when they're, when they don't, what, what, either way, whether they work out or they don't work out. So can you feel how this is like, this is not like regular stuff. This is not like those other things. This thing is not like those other things. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's uh, let's take a pause for just one second. Um, <clears throat> where am I in time? Okay. Uh, uh, maybe about five minutes of questions or comments. Let's just see how far we get with that. Well, a question came up for me, Michael. Um, in uh, the model of the organizational levels, it was interesting that there's not a, that I'm, I'm curious as to, I'm sure he thought a lot about it, but why yellow it, from the spiral isn't uh, there? Because I do feel like too, there is also a sense of an organization sort of becoming itself, which I think mm -hmm. is part of what happens for an individual at yellow. Um, well, well, yellow is teal. Oh, my bad. Oh, okay. I'm confused. Which is which is a good point. So, so um, inter, the integral altitudes are not the same as spiral dynamics. So that's a that's a, uh -huh. a good point to raise. So amber is the same thing as blue in spiral dynamics, and and teal is the same thing as yellow in spiral dynamics. Okay. So Orange then, and green are both the same. So then, what's not on there is the turquoise. Then. Yes. Right. <clears throat> Lalo Lalo didn't define turquoise at all. I mean, I mean, Claire Graves did, but but and and Don Beck did, but interesting. So so there's no see the thing that the thing that Lalo did um, that I think was so important was he didn't invent anything new. I mean, he completely relied on you know spiral dynamics and integral theory with what he was doing, but he specifically turned his spotlight on organizations, not on individuals, and and not on societies, on mid-level abstractions rather than 
high level abstractions or low level abstractions. And, and that was a different, you know, we, we, we know what it looks like in, in, in an individual to be a turquoise. We don't know what it looks like at an organizational level to be in turquoise. Mm. Uh, mm, that's a theory. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. It's a, def it's a defensible position. It may not be right. Thank you. Anything else? Right now. Yeah, I, I have a question for the companies. Who's, who's, oh, I'm sorry, it's Paul, Paul Weston. Paul, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, how, um, you know, companies that may be in that teal um, uh, level, how do they compare, or, or do it the other way around? If you look to the companies with the strongest brand recognition, Perhaps companies that have the most effect on the world, you know, whether you, you pick Apple or, you know, whatever you want to pick. Um, and then those ugly things like revenue and market share and all those, all those things. What's the, is there any correlation between the companies that have had all those types of successes versus companies in, or, or as compared with or correlation to the teal? Level well, of performance. So I don't think we have enough data on that to, to be for sure. But what I, what I do know is because I, I studied culture a lot before uh, Spiral Dynamics and Integral actually, and and the thing that makes a culture successful is its um, internal integrity. So you can have a very good organization that's completely amber or completely orange or completely green, and it works quite well because there's a coherence to it. You know, when you have warring factions in IT versus marketing versus, you know, they're all singing from a different sheet, that doesn't work so well. But Bill Snyder um, wrote a book a long time ago called The Reengineering Alternative, which was about a typology of, uh, of cultures that I think is actually spiral dynamics. He, he thought it was a typology. I think it's a developmental system. But, um, <clears throat> but you know, he, he did a lot of research and, and a clearly consistent culture where there's a core culture and other functions are in service to the core culture, you know, are, are become, uh, you know, like, like the companies in good to great, for instance, Jim Collins, um, they have a coherent culture. They'll, they'll yeah, arguably they'll, you know, like the individuals that Graves researched, <clears throat> um, uh, Teal was decidedly yellow, uh, was decidedly better than all the other groups put together in terms of their productivity and their ingenuity of solutions. Cause they, cause they argue without it being personal. They argue truly about ideas, not about who's right. So that creates get bits and better, creates better stuff. So, so then we, if, if that's what you conclude, would you expect those companies that have had that, you know, better stuff um, to, I, I understand what you're saying about the data uh, there's enough data, but would you expect to find them to be more in the teal? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would be, I would be shocked if that was not the case. I just don't, can't back it up from a, a, a study point of view. Okay. Great. Right. Thank you. I mean, I, th I think so right now, orange is uh, level uh, six, uh, five is the predominant around the world. It has clearly the most power of all the value memes. In, in, in the, you know, every sense of the term, military, economic. Um, but, but teal is actually much smarter and more capable than, than orange is. Seven is much more capable than five is. And it's going to eat its lunch. It's just a matter of time until, I mean, you know, teal organizations are going to destroy orange organizations. They're going to make them obsolete. They're, it's already happening. You can already see, you know, it's, it's the, all the fragmentation, all the, you know, people are just, it's like derivatives, you know, and bullshit. It's, it's total crap. Um, yeah, the, 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 the maneuvering they do to, to um, uh, uh, you know, because they're, because they're, they're, you know, they're not at the level of sense making that is required for, um, for dealing with complexity, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes here. Okay, back to the flyby on the, um, uh, just to get, this is going to be really fast, just to give you the, the flavor of it. So in the practices and behavior window, these are called the, the integral quadrants and they're the four fundamental perspectives that we use to filter the world. So we're all, they're all four of them are always going on at the same time. There's nowhere to go. 
we're 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 looking from these windows at something in the in a center, let's say, like a client organization or a team. So if we look from this window, what we uh, see or what we focus on are business results. And the, and the principle is empiricism there. And the, the kind of things we see are metrics or practices. Okay, those are important. I think you'd agree. And this is where most uh, uh, transformation efforts focus because it's the thing that uh, especially orange level uh, five organizations love or, or think is true, think is real, okay? If we, if we look from the organizational architecture window, we look at the flow of value. Not the same thing as innovation, related to it, but not the same thing. We, we take a systems thinking kind of a point of view and a complexity point of view, and we see, see things like policies or uh, a governance, the org chart, the structure. If we look from um, the organizational, uh, oh, and that's that outer agility, that's the right hand side is outer agility. We look at the organizational culture window. We look at what I was just talking about, cultural resilience. Is the, is the culture resi uh, coherent with itself and is it resilient? Can it, can it spring back or adapt to um, changes? And we see shared values. And um, like uh, if any of you have taken any ORSC classes, organization and relationship systems coaching classes, um, we talk about emotional fields because human beings generate an emotional field, just like, you know, planets generate gravitational fields. We generate emotional fields around us and we interact, those, those fields interact with each other and form new things. So that's kind of one of the, one of the things we would see or experience from that perspective. And then finally, complexity of consciousness. Um, we see thinking patterns, we see individual beliefs or emotions or values. So can you see that those are all valid things to look at or things to think about or focus on. Does that make sense? And can you feel into which ones of those are really comfortable for you and which ones of those are just like you don't think that way usually? You can appreciate it if somebody calls your attention to it, but you just don't think that way. How many people are more on the left-hand quadrants? And how many people are more in the right-hand quadrants? I don't think I can see everybody. But... So, so when you do, if you want to think in an integral way, if you want to be successful as an enterprise coach especially, you need to have a, a team that you put together that, that thinks integrally, that thinks, because all of these perspectives are true, but they're partial. And so why would you do one of four things, if you could do four of four things. You know, there's, there's always a support between these, um, you know, boosting one boosts another. Okay, so uh, why is transformation so hard, part two. So uh, agile coaches, scrum masters, and agilistas up here near community sensitivity and harmony, this is level six. Mm -hmm. And corporate clients, most of them, self-expression, success-driven, rationality, right? Your clients are there, you're there. As a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking to you individually, but if I'm, if, I'm, um, if I'm talking to you as an agile community of coaches, and I realize you're not, are not necessarily all coaches, but um, uh, I mean, I, I've coached uh, and, and trained, you know, thousands of agile coaches. And, and this is where they as a whole are, and this is where their corporate clients are. And you can see the amount of overlap. I mean, this, this is certainly not right, but this is true. Catch my distinction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so this is, so, and, and I, you know, this, as I, as I was creating this, uh, yeah, this was sort of just coming to me. Um, this is about the right amount of overlap, I think. It's certainly the case that there's overlap between the value systems. F for instance, agile coaches, scrum masters, agilistas are certainly concerned about being marketable and getting a job. They have to be. So they have to activate some of that orange in them. And, and uh, corporate clients are uh, centered in orange typically, or, or even some in amber, um, 
but they uh, but they sell to people at Green, um, and they hire people at Green as well as Orange. So they have to be diverse. They have to be politically correct within a certain you know range of things. So they so they at least at least instrumentally share some of these green values. They don't, they may or may not genuinely, but they also might be in transition to green. So this is a pretty thin level of overlap where, you know, the, the, the memes, as, as uh, Graves said, um, a person has a psychology um, and a, uh, a, a desire for therapy, for consulting, for coaching, uh, for management um, at the level at which they're at. That's what they expect. That's how they make sense of the world. So imagine talking to, you know, um, when you work with kids, uh, for instance, really good teachers don't talk down to kids. Really good teachers, you know, move themselves down and are able to, to speak eye to eye to a child. At a different level though, they don't talk in the same way that they would to an adult, but they, they, they um, put themselves at that same eye level. And that's some of what we need to do. And we don't like it because uh, we don't want to, um, we don't like all those orange values a lot of times. Again, as a community, you certainly may be different. So the problem is, so hopefully you see what, what I'm setting up as the problem there is that there's a, not a very big overlap and you're definitely not in the same uh, uh, culture code together. So you can't, your key can't unlock their lock. So why, why do you think there is that? Why would people that aren't a good overlap with their customer be attracted to the role? Because the, uh, because the design and the philosophy and the language and the underlying uh, value meme of, of Agile is, is pluralistic green. So they want to do what they want to do. And those orange organizations that want to become more efficient and, you know, have better customer service and whatnot, think that Agile is a tool. And, and you know, they are, to some extent, they're right. And, and on the other hand, when I, when I was a team coach um, a while ago now, uh, you know, I had very successful Agile teams, all of them, but that's because I, I created a, uh, a pluralistic green culture in them. I, I mean, I insisted on it. Um, so, so it worked really well, but when you, but when you, when you put it into an orange organization and it just stays orange, it's not really very effective, but there's, there's the edge of, you know, it's, I, I always like to say that when, when, I, when I bring my um, Agile banner around, when I walk through the organization with my, marching with my Agile banner, it's a green flag. And everybody that's green goes, oh, I want to play in that game. Let's play green games together. I don't like these orange games so much. But the orange managers go, yeah, but you got, yeah, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know about all your uh, hokey pokey stuff. But, you know, uh, you guys seem to work faster and, you know, customers are happier with you. So they're, and, and put, put another way, um, so on, on the one hand, we have uh, the complexity of the environment. And on the other hand, we have the complexity of our mind, right? And, and this is, uh, uh, you know, everybody knows this term, VUCA, and this term, uh, SCSC, Stability, Certainty, Simplicity, Clarity. Um, nobody knows that term that I know of. Um, <clears throat> so, so depends on where your environment is. And so certainly everybody is at different, if this was a slider, people would be at different places on here. But I, I think you'll agree that it's not down here that almost any, probably any of your clients are out there up in here. And, and so on the, on the complexity of mind side, we have uh, level four to five, level five to six and level seven. That approximately, again, this is not uh, uh, empirically accurate. It is poetically true. Um, so uh, uh, socialized mind, you know, is, is way down, is, is not, does not deal with complexity. Just doesn't have the ability to do that. And so 
uh, pick pick where you want to on the slider on the on the VUCA side on the environment side, and then see where you are where your leadership is. So this this is the this is the money slide that that um, CEOs need to pay attention to. When you have a uh, we use the leadership circle tool to, to uh, 360 tool to measure leadership effectiveness. Um, it's very correlated with a uh, level of development like this is, and it's, it is correlated with business performance. It's not just being a better person or something. It's a hard fact that, that you having a more effective leadership team, a higher leadership quotient will make you, will make your organization money. And if you have a low leadership quotient, you'll be a competitive disadvantage. Your leadership is a competitive disadvantage. So why would a CEO not know what the answer to this question is? Where is my level of leadership in my organization? Doesn't that seem like a key metric? Do you know, do you know any CEOs that, that measure that? See, that, that's the, this is the, the, the business case for doing this kind of work because it, it would be helpful to raise people's level up but it's, uh, that's what level up means. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna look at, uh, let's see, where are we, 704. So we got about 55 minutes left, is that right, Kevin, or John? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's great. All righty, we should be in good shape. Um, we'll have plenty of time for. So let's look at what's natural um, at each altitude. This is just a different take on what we've been saying, but I'm putting points on the line. So if we're looking at uh, uh, product uh, development, product innovation, three levels that we could define, goal-centric waterfall, basically where I'm, where I'm a huge, I, I predict a goal, uh, I plan for it and I correct back to it. That's goal-centric. Customer-centric is, is the inherent, uh, you know, how agile works. The customer is the center of things. Systemic centric is more like how um, Apple develops products. You know, they care about their customers, but their customers don't drive what they do. Their brand does. Their brand is actually more important than, than any given customer. So that's a bigger perspective to take when you want to take the customer's perspective and marketing's perspective and the average Apple employee's perspective. That's, you know, becomes more complex. What would be a good example of a goal-centric organization? Is that be like a nonprofit? No, um, uh, goal in this case, waterfall, uh, uh, waterfall development. Okay, Makes because sense. because because I go by the Iron Triangle, right? I go by schedule, scope, and, and budget. That's what I. That's my uh, driver or my validation of I'm successful as a project manager. Where, whereas in, in customer centric, the customer saying, I love that is validation <laughs> uh, that you were successful. All right. So if we, if we now, if we go, so that was the it quadrant, if we go down to the it's quadrant, lower right, um, you know, in terms of like uh, uh, hierarchies, we have a bureaucracy at the bottom level. We have a matrix in the orange range and an adaptive marketplace, you know, sociocracy maybe, or uh, something like that, or just some kind of adaptive structure is what can emerge when you get up here. I'm just trying to give you a flavor of this, not, again, not teach it to you. So these are um, pretty much what, uh, what Lalo's names were. And uh, then from a leadership point of view, Michael and I made a, we're, we're presenting some of this stuff and we, you know, he likes the term predict and plan and sense and respond. And we use that in, in, um, in management workshops and in talking to uh, as coaches about how leaders mind can work. <sighs> but really beneath that is, is command and control. That's where command and control is really more of an amber kind of a thing. And it's not the same as predict and plan, right? Predict and plan is more scientific. Um, uh, you know, command and control is more, I got to be in control. I got to be in control of the finances. Mm -hmm. hmm. Personal example. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So, so, so just get, just get a sense of this, like what comes in at each level. Just read those terms and get a feel for that.
So can you feel the evolutionary progression of that? So, and then, then the, what you do in terms of agile uh, shows up differently by different culture code, right? At, at Amber, people, people will certainly do agile in an Amber organization if the boss tells them to. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But they won't understand it or they won't be able to do what it says. Within, they, they might be able to individually, but as a culture, they won't be able to. So, so you know, people, uh, sometimes um, a given group or team or culture makes the people on it smarter, and sometimes it makes them stupider, right? Mm. You, ever, you ever been on a, in a group of people where you felt stupider than the whole? Mm. So, uh, you know, orange is going to be all about results. You know, say you, you've probably heard this from your clients, save me money and I'll love you. You know, uh, uh, get customer satisfaction numbers up and I'll love you. Um, uh, improve, improve team morale. Well, can you tie it to uh, 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 cost? If you can tie it to cost, you know, I might care, but do I really care about employee morale? Well, I probably better say I do. Green is, is people driven, right? You can actually do the the cultural consistency, the culture, culture code match between green and agile is just about perfect. There's a soft, there's a little bit of a, a teal in in agile, but not not as much as we would like to think. I think mm -hmm. not emotionally or something, not our emotional allegiance. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to pause here. I'm going to I'm going to just oh yeah. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to go through I'm gonna, I just want to show you what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to go through um like what's realistic in a level 4 5 enterprise and a level 5 and a level 5 6 and a level 6. You know what if you're depending on your diagnosis of where you are, what's actually possible. So that's where I'm setting up or what I'm setting up, but I think this might be <clears throat> So my, my advice for how you can make things go better is first to take a systemic view and discover the system. And the system does not mean the person that pays you. They're a voice of that system. They are, um, they are never the client for me. And that's what I would suggest is that you elevate your sense of who the client is from an individual level or a couple people level to the entire system. And you need to find out there's ways to find out about systems and how they work, what the dynamics are, and you know, find out about those. Um, second, spades law of change. Only go where you're wanted. Mm. Agile coaches waste tremendous amounts of energy trying to convince people who are not convincible or or uh, or so far from it that it's just not worth it. There's an old um uh Chinese uh, saying, Feng Su, easy is right. Mm. When it's easy, it's the universe agreeing with me. Not overly simplistic. When you feel, you know, you know that feeling of being in the flow. You feel like you're not fighting upstream. You're surrendering to what's true. Mm. Third, uh, Remember that like attracts like. That's the match the value meme. You can't, my mother used to love the saying, you can't um, uh, catch a fly with vinegar. So, so you know, it won't help Achievement Orange leaders um, for you to lecture them on um, how good green values are. You could show them data because they understand data. And you can help them reach a different conclusion. And you can even reflect back their the mismatch between what they say they want and what they're willing to do. Because there's often a big mismatch. They often want something and they're not willing to, quote, pay for it. Not, not money a lot of times in, in looking in the mirror a lot of times. Uh, fourthly, take the client where they need to go, not where you want them to go. This is the 
probably the biggest pain point that I saw in, in teaching all these coaches is um, they wanted the client to go where they, they wanted them to go. I mean, and I, I don't, I'm not at all saying that there was any ill intention in that there was actually compassion and generosity in it, but, yeah. but it becomes not skillful it becomes pushing. It becomes, it starts to become before we know it, it starts to become our ego that wants something to be a certain way. And we, and we think we're right and we want to validate that we're right. Um, a change process can be influenced, uh, but it cannot be controlled. No matter how much your client wants it to be controlled, that's just not going to happen. That is not the nature of self-organizing systems. They, you can't control them. By definition, you can influence them. You, you do all the time, right? And sometimes the pattern goes weird. Sometimes the pattern goes wonky, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, and finally, um, honor, this is something that we teach in our enterprise um, coach, uh, b both in the master camp and in the, the expert cohort. Um, you have to honor your own why. Can't, you can't have, you know, like there's some people that, um, you know, can work very productively in amber and orange organizations and God bless them. That, that's, it, it's consistent with their why. And so they can feel productive, generative doing it. I couldn't. So I don't, I don't choose to, to work there, but that's because my why is different. So you've got to respect your own why. All right, let's, I'm going to, I think I'm going to pause here before I, um, what uh, comments or questions do you have right now? Oh, I know. Okay, time out. Um, how about if we have a uh, how about if we have a breakout for about five minutes? Because this material is really um, uh, deep and uh, uh, it, it blows your your uh, circuits out just a little bit, and it helps to ground it by actually talking about it to you know even even to one or two. Can, Kevin, can you do that? Yep. Yeah, um, you, uh, I'll just send people to the same breakout rooms they were in before because they they don't. No, too, no, too too big. Uh, can okay. you can you do it? To, can you do it to like two or three at most? Yep. In a group. One second. You know, it allows everybody to talk more easily if it's a smaller. Michael, while he's doing that, I've got a quick question. Uh, this is Steve. I, I was wondering in that book that you had at the very beginning, and I I saw it on Amazon. Is is that this, I love this structure and I could see how you could use it as a agile coach. I'm not an agile coach, but I could see how you could use it in that. Yeah. Uh, is that, is the content in that book uh, as well to have oh, a yeah. deeper kind of reading on yeah. that? Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Not absolutely everything that I've said here, but, but, but the framework oh. and, and explained in a lot more detail. And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a to read book. You're get, you'll need to read it twice. <laughs> I mean, you, you might well understand it three times. I'll get to just, sorry, three, two to three times I've been, I've been informed. Um, you know, I, I've read, uh, you know, many books that I come back to, I read them, you know, three or four times. You know, and if, if it's a good book or if it has nuance in it, you pick up completely different, you know, it's like a good movie, right? You know, like how many times have you seen Shakespeare in love, for God's sake? It, it never gets old. My book's not like that, so I, just, I don't mean to, I, I carried the analogy too far. Okay, sir, send them away, will you, for five minutes? Yep, five minutes. So we'll be back at uh, about 7.23 Eastern time, at least. Back. Woo! That was a really good idea, Michael. What? That was a really good idea. Good okay, good, good. Was it was it useful for other people? Yeah, yeah it was for me. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, it was def definitely useful. I thought you'd send me to solitary first. I sat there all by myself. I said, well, I, all right, I'm not going to ask any more questions. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're picking that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll be quiet for the rest. Of the Seriously, what I will. I, 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 <laughs> so, so for you, I would suggest you wait till the third or fourth question has been asked. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, seriously. Yeah. see, because seriously, this is this is a classic problem a, in a, as a facilitator. It's great to have somebody start you off and get the engines going, right? But it can become a pattern, especially if the rest of the people are slightly hesitant or whatever. It can become a channel that that person gets used by the system on a certain level to to crank it up. And you and you need to create diversity in that. You want to start the pattern, and then you want to shape it in slightly different directions. So that's why I say, ask the fourth question, and then see. Then then it won't be in your pattern. It will be other people. You know, so maybe there'll be a little awkward silence, or you know, whatever. Okay. I've got it. Thanks. But that's why I I do appreciate the questions because I'm having a tough time trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. how to apply this personally mm -hmm. yeah uh, great. other people's questions are, are very very yes. helpful yes great great so who has either a question or an insight i think for me when you were speaking about not letting your ego get in the way um mm -hmm. and trying to meet the need um, that really like stuck out to me the most. Cause I, I do know that like oftentimes you have plans, you see, you have ideals of where you're trying to get people to go. And um, especially if you're in a, in, um, working in a culture that's, you know, very resistant, right. Yeah. To yeah. adapting yeah. the agile mindset. Yeah. Um, right. It can be very uh, discouraging um, yeah. or you, you start feeling frustration yeah. Yeah. Um, and just having a moment of transparency um, when you're envisioning something and it doesn't happen. So yeah. Um, yeah. that that was a very good reminder to me to just kind of like get out of my own headspace and it's um, to let go a little bit about that, you know, and just mm -hmm. to meet people where they are and maybe just adapting my own um, thought process or my own plans, right? Mm -hmm. um, to, to help support the team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, great. Thank you, Lieutenant. The, and um, the, the thing I want to say about that is, um, <clears throat> you know, we we see what we see for clients um, almost always out of uh, compassion and caring. And if they would only take our advice, um, they might well get better or be happier. But they have to be somebody different to take our advice. Mm -hmm. than they are and so then we argue with that instead of so 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 we we start out with compassion and generosity and then it turns into frustration and, and you're a mm -hmm. jerk because you're not listening to me mm -hmm. right that's where it becomes our ego as opposed to we we send out a probe huh i mm -hmm. wonder what happened would happen if you if you um uh tried to do a, a build every day Mm -hmm. See, that's that's different than you need to do a build every day. You get you're you're an idiot if you don't you know right. blah blah blah. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 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 then if they, if they reject that, then you go oh. Instead of saying they rejected my idea, you say oh how interesting. What does that tell me about their sense making? What mm -hmm. does it tell me about how they understand the world mm -hmm. that I can now have an access point in? Right. Does that make yeah, sense? yeah yeah that makes sense. Yeah, utilize those powerful questions. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and that that neutral coaching stance mm -hmm. where you're not attached to what they do, you you mm -hmm. you give them sovereignty of their own, um, you know, their own life and their right. or, or their own business life. Mm -hmm. Like it's their it's their organization, not yours. I mean, it might right. be yours, but you're always an internal consultant, right? Right, right, right. Mm, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Latoya. I appreciate your, your comment. Question or insight? You know, the I work for a big organization and a lot of our teams right now, um, they've recently gone through transformation. They've been working in agile ways for a few months now, but we there was a reorganization and we moved to a part of the uh, company that 
is not agile. Mm -hmm. And since then, all of a sudden, all progress is kind of halted because mm -hmm. they feel like every other effort they've made at the bank stops after a year or two. And so they think this is just it stopping. Mm -hmm. How do you find a way to reinvigorate that momentum? Mm -hmm. Well, what if you can't? That's the question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, so why, why do you want to? Why do I want to? Yeah. Because, well, okay, I used to work with a team. They're great people. They're very smart. Yeah. They yeah. saw the value initially, yeah. and they yeah. were making improvements and very happy. Yeah. But yeah. They, my impression is they think the effort to continue moving forward would be more difficult than it's worth yeah, because right. no one else is doing it yet. Yeah, There's a plan right, to, right, but it's not right. there yet. What, and could they be right about that? In this specific instance, I don't want to say yes yet, um, but they, they could be. <laughs> so so hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, so Daniel, so you're giving us a huge gift. So you see how this is your sense making. Yes, it is. Right. It's how you are making is the story that you're making up about reality. It's, it's a good point. It's, it's hard for me to wrap my head That's around how they see it and find a way to motivate right. them. Yeah, yeah. So 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 notice that that you're attached to motivating them. It's yes. your thing, it's not theirs. Right. So, see, and I recognize that. I recognize yeah. that I see what they could be. Yes. And have you told them that? Yes. Dur We've had directly? that conversation. Yes. We've had that conversation and, regularly. And, and with, with a certain amount of emotion, as, uh, emotion in you as opposed to scolding? Oh yeah, it's more passion than like telling them, "Hey, you have to do this," yeah, because yeah, they yeah. they know me, they've known me for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, got it. But the, I guess the part of the issue is they're all significantly more senior senior than I am, huh. Um, huh. and they're more comfortable in the way they've been doing it, and they're overworked to begin with. Uh -huh. So to ask them to do more, to change things, mm -hmm. to kind of in a sense to say, "Hey." I need to stop what you're doing and sharpen the plow blade so we can plow the rest uh -huh. of the field faster. Uh -huh. They're like, we just got to keep going. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. And and they might be right. Potentially. And, and <laughs> <laughs> um, so so I really appreciate your your uh, looking at this and um, uh, it really is the crux of the matter. Like what? So so you know it, then it comes down to is your why a match for their why. Why I want to see. No, no, why you want to do the job, you know, like for oh. me, so, so right. for me, here, here's an example of my why. If I'm not working with the, um, the, the CEO uh, in a transformation, I'm, I'm not going to be interested in doing that work because mm -hmm. it's not going to be successful. So, yeah. so if, if they, if, if, if the director really, really, really wants me to come in, um, I'm probably going to say, sorry, I can't. Cause you're, I know you're in pain or you could be better or whatever, and maybe I could help you, but we're not going to be successful. So I'm not going to take that gig. It's not consistent with, with my path or my calling. Well, I mean, that, you have that's side what's true for you, but <clears throat> No, that's actually a really good thing to say because it reaffirms I've been working on what my plan is. Like, how am I going to uh, yes, yes. improve anything if it's going to change yes. at all? Right. And one right. of the things was right. going to the global head of this area and saying, look, yeah. I need to be involved yes. in this and yes. I need to help you. Yes. So, or, or I need to leave. Or right. be reassigned. Yeah, I've also said that. <laughs> see, see so, so, but do you... It, you might have just backed away from it, but it, there was a there was a power in that for a minute of of clarity and do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I I'm glad I talked it out. It helps yeah. to kind of 
lay everything out in that manner. Yeah, great. So, so that's collective sense making. Mm. That's us making sense together. And see, if we keep all that stuff inside our head, we're, we're, we only have our own story. And our own story is bullshit. Everybody's mm -hmm. own story is bullshit. You can see it when you take it as object, like, like um, uh, one of my uh, practices is the leader's journal. The leader's journal is extremely important because, because when, we, when we have a journal, we can see ourselves, we can take ourselves as an object, not just we're, we're inside our own head and we can't get out of it, right? Because we, we're reflecting and we, so it's, it's taking ourselves as an object. And all development happens by taking subject and turning it into object. I won't say anything more about that. I Jillian, like that you idea. Do you have any more information on like Leader's Journal or I can just go look it up online? Um, I just made it up uh, last night. So, right. I mean, I mean, not that people don't don't talk about journaling, but I, I, I just stated it in the way I just said it to you. I've never said that before in public. Well, I think for that purpose, that's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, great, great. You're welcome. Jillian, did you have a... Hey. Yeah, I was, I guess it was a couple of things that we had talked about in the breakout I thought might be interesting. Oh, great. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Like one is I, I feel like I've kind of observed over the past five years or so with, you know, thinking about like that Lalu book and the levels and like what I've noticed is that they nest like there mm -hmm. will be within, you know, within an orange or dominantly orange organization, there will be inside of it. And then there will be, you know, red inside of that. And especially like the smaller the group of people and the higher up in the organization it is, like the redder it will be usually. Mm -hmm. And that, that maybe there's something like when you're, mm -hmm. you know, when you're trying to meet whoever you're working with, you're trying to meet them where they're at and mm. you're trying to understand that and like, what is their striving, right? Like, what is it that they're yeah, trying to get right. to the next level for them yeah. personally, like forget about the colors yeah. or whatever, right? Yeah. And, but when you're doing that, it's often not just one of those value sets. Like you're often- Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, great. Yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, you're, you're wanting to point that out that there's nested or, or embedded levels within us. Yes. And, it, and do you have another comment about it or a question about it? Or well, the other thing up? that we connected there that I guess I connected with when we were talking was like another framework um, that doesn't come from Lean Agile, but is called Three Horizons that comes from kind of the hmm. futures community. And it oh, talks- which community? Like the futures, futures huh, okay. and planning and that, that kind of stuff. Huh, okay. um, but this idea that, you know, the first horizon is the status quo. The second horizon hmm the innovation horizon, which always has mm. to come into the first horizon. It has to meet its need mm. because that's how mm. resources are transferred, mm. right? Uh -huh. that's, what's the striving mm. of the first horizon? That's your hook to move, mm. move the system. And the third horizon is like this to be system that you're emerging or trying to get towards It's your vision, right? right. And the, the thing that's tricky about the second horizon is you need to, you have to hook the, the first horizon or you can't get anywhere, yeah, <laughs> but you can't right, only meet right. the need yeah, in their yeah, paradigm, right? right? right it's like right. that's where that transition, yeah. that's where that yeah. nesting happens yeah, because right. you've got to swallow the old right. paradigm in yeah, a way yeah, that satisfies yeah. it, yeah. but also creates yeah. like, the opportunity for yeah. anything to yeah. 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 So cool. that was like sort of a connection. Yeah. So, so, so that's a really deep insight. I really like that. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to. Um, I don't want to. Uh, so, uh, Mike, respond to it directly. For, uh, Hello. For the twenty years. Hello. Um, and he is recent. Oh. <laughs> um, hello. Here. <laughs> so, so um, I love your point, Jillian, and and, and I'm not going to respond directly to it as as tell you what it evoked in me. And, and maybe this is they're, they're related somehow. What it evoked in me is a couple of things. One of which I am not sure I can remember right now, but the other of which is um, that that in, in in integral we talk about transcend and include. So when you move up from um, amber to orange, you take with you ideally a moral compass, and and um, uh, you know. Um, the, the, the sense of duty on a basic level as a citizen that people get it amber. 
and you're supposed to get that. You need to get that or you're not going to be a member of society. You're going to be a derelict or a, you know, a, a criminal. Uh, and, and then at orange, you take, I mean, when you go to green, you take with you the um, orange values of self-promotion in a healthy way, of healthy competition, of, um, of thinking marketing, of, of you know, wanting to get ahead in a, in a reasonable way and, and so forth. So you, so you transcend, but you include a lot of times we don't develop wrong and we don't include, we transcend and repress and green, especially is, is uh, guilty of that green uh, loads orange, you know, it's, it's uh, the green progressives saying, you know, capitalist corporations are, you know, my daughter, um, says capitalist corporations are the you know ultimate evil or you know blah blah blah. Maybe a little extreme. I mean, you do have a point. I, I can I can totally get the point, but it's a little extreme. Um, and and that's a problem that you that we don't transcend and include because we, we need to. Does that have any meaning to you? And what you said? It it does, and I'm actually thinking about it in another space. Um, hmm. If you because I, I do work sort of in like regeneration movement and stuff too. And oh, really? the, um, what you just said about how you have to like, what, what was the word you said? Include. Transcend and include, yeah. Transform. I think when, yeah, when you fail to do that, that's what leads to collapse. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. Yes. Oh, oh, the other something, you remind, you remind me of the other thing. So the other thing I want to say is that, um, Don Beck and Chris Cowan, when they were, Don Beck was a student of Claire Graves and, and did the next generation um, uh, writing about him um, in the most important and worst written book ever, Spiral Dynamics. Um, uh, he talks about spiral wizardry. And what a spiral wizard is, is somebody who's at the second tier, like a teal or turquoise, and can appreciate all the, the value means before it. it. It appreciates red. It appreciates, you know, amber. It appreciates orange. It doesn't, it's not run by those things, that mindset, but it acknowledges and values them. Just like, so one of the practices we have in our, um, in, in our cohort uh, is um, what, what I call a spiral check-in. So I might say um, uh, the red in me uh, uh, you know, just wants to mute this jerk. Um, and the, the, uh, uh, the amber in me um, uh, wants a, a feeling of order. And the orange in me um, uh, wants people to buy my book. And, and the green in me um, wants to connect with, you know, this person, you know, on a, on a heart level. And the, uh, the, the teal in me is really fascinated with the, um, the way that the interactions happen here and feed off of each other. So if, if we can't get in touch with the, the red in us, we're actually not gonna be able to serve people because it's because it's going on to your point about, you know, all those things are going on. There are, all those levels are going on in us uh, uh, at the same time, but one of them runs us. See, one of them, so, so the, the way that our sense making work is that we tell ourselves stories that fit with our self concept, who we think we are, right? And we, we tell ourselves the same stories over and over again um, because they, they make us feel safe and comfortable and they give us a framework to live life. And then at some point, the way we tell stories breaks down often and we have to go to a different higher level of telling stories to ourselves. And that, that's what is a, is a phase that, that shift. Um, how was I going with that? I don't think I can remember. I'm sorry. I'm an old fart. <laughs> can I say? Uh, any any follow up, Jillian? Yeah, I think there was, but I lost it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're even. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you got a question? Comment? I do not. And it wasn't because you told me to ask every fourth question, by the way. I just ran out of steam, I guess. You know, <laughs> I'm obviously I'm obviously on the front loaded loaded end. I'm now processing everything. 
I'm in that sort of processing sign-up mode, so I'm not. I'm not sulking. I just want to point that out. <laughs> <laughs> and that spelling solitary, I think it really straightened me out. To be honest with you. So the, the what? The solitary. The, that, that all solitary, where I was just on my own in the breakout oh. room. But it just, <laughs> It gave me gave me time to reflect. We, we so. call that uh, we, you know we call that those yeah, are so. those are the random gods. <laughs> Seriously, the random gods put people in breakout rooms, and they're actually always perfect. They don't seem like it, but they actually are. <laughs> I was but, just but about usually, to I was just about to cry for help, and then fortunately Daniel <laughs> came in and rescued me, so it's okay. You just call Kevin Civic a god. <laughs> No, no, it was actual Daniel. Oh, sorry. Oh, you called Kevin Civic. I actually, yeah, I get it. Now. Yeah, I'll take what I can get. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. So we got, uh, we got uh, 10, 15 minutes, maybe. So I have a comment. Where we get it, we get it in, in sooner. Chris, go ahead. I want to thank you for a way to introduce these models to my new coworker. He oh yeah. So broadly and collects mental models. I think uh -huh. I say, uh, try this book. It, I can't imagine <laughs> it's going to take his career. Uh -huh. yeah. So thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, oh, I know what I was going to say to Jillian. Um, if I may be permitted to close that loop. Um, so, so I didn't finish the story of Spiral Wizardry. Spiral Wizards, because um, I went off on the tangent of the, uh, the spiral chicken. So Spiral Wizard is somebody at the second tier where they're into self-actualization on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They've got all their other needs met. If you live in a war zone, you're not going to be self-actualized. You're going to be Mad Max. Cultural, you know, life circumstances, uh, we match what, what fits, what works in a cultural circumstance, right? Or a physical, uh, whatever circumstance. So um, uh, Don Beck was a consultant to um, uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa uh, coming out of apartheid. And what um, Don counseled uh, uh, Mandela to do was to create a spiral theme that connected all the levels of the spiral. Because you can't, you have to talk, you have to talk each group's language. You, you know, it's like, that's why I say it's a culture code. It's like a, it's like a slit, you know, it's going this way, or it's going this way, quantum physics. You pick the, pick the way it measures uh, and, and it shows up that way, right? You, you control reality on that level. Um, so, so you've got to talk to each level. So, so the spring box were the rugby team, right? And every, every level of the spiral could get behind the spring box. Amber could because it was uh, a, a duty and loyalty to South Africa. Orange could because they were going to beat the shit out of, you know, uh, the rest of the world and, and make a lot of money. Um, green could because uh, it, it would included blacks. So it talked to all, and, you know, it was fantastically, if you've seen Invictus, uh, the movie, you know, that made the difference. It, it created a national identity for them that they could join different things that normally battle with each other. You know, blue, tradi uh, uh, amber, traditional is, is conservative uh, 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 folks in, in the U.S. You know, green is liberal and uh, orange is, um, uh, uh, you know, people, more moderate people that are in the middle. Culture war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have to respond to that because that really clicked something for me. Um, just this idea that you have to like, okay, so innovation can only occur in the overlap of whatever the set of stakeholders are that have to come together to create the thing. It's only the space where needs and strivings and opportunities and whatever, like where those overlap, that's the only possibility space. If you're outside of that middle of the Venn diagram, you're wasting your time. And so what you just said is like, if we think about culture, all of those different cultures that exist, I mean, even out in the world, right? Like mm -hmm. beyond just sort of the levels of this organizational model, but like, like there's just different value sets that people have in, in general in society, mm -hmm. right? We have to find like a codex. They all have to yeah, line up exactly. and where Precise. they all line up 
that's yes, the exactly. only possible space. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you definitely. draw? Can you draw me a diagram of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be I'd be happy to pay you for that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, so just to reiterate one, one thing that Michael said um, that I thought was really important is that, um, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not getting all the names down, but um, if it doesn't come from the top down, you know, one of my favorite slogans is change your company or change your company. In other words, you guys are all very smart, marketable people that want to do agile coaching and want to make a better culture and a better place. And so one of my biggest frustrations is I go into places and people are just beating their heads against the wall and they, yeah. they don't see those levels and it's right. not from the top down. And so to right. your point, like right. you only live once, like pick, yeah. pick battles you can win <laughs> and go in. Right. right? Don't, right. don't carry the flag around to, right. to people that don't have the levels. Um, it's hard to say no, but it was just COVID times. You're all extremely marketable. Right. You know, Trust it's me, so there's, funny. No, there's no shortage in, in New York, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Columbus, mm -hmm. Raleigh, you know, go down <laughs> the list, right? There's, there's no shortage of people needing your talent. So again, change your company. If you can't change your company, then change your company, change who you hang out with, get yourself around other awesome agile coaches and make a difference. It's funny. Cause I've heard something similar recently. Um, and it was someone saying, you know, they don't, they no longer work with teams in their company that don't want their help. Mm -hmm. And to me, having worked for a company so long that you just always do almost what you're told or like what you're supposed to do, I'm starting to realize that's not so simple. And it's the most difficult and also the most yeah. liberating concept. Yeah. And you just summed it up in one quick sentence. I, I just keep going back to in my head what the coach is challenge, challenge it up and a closed mouth doesn't get fed. Ask. And it doesn't matter what level. They're humans just like you and I are and stuff like that. That level of hierarchy, just throw it out the door and just say what you need to say and and just have full faith in it. Just go with it. I mean, what's the worst thing they could say is no? Okay, move on. No, but you won't know until you actually ask. Um, that's the, I'll you, leave you guys with that. Yeah, Monica, you, my, you remind me of the saying: um, uh, people uh, don't get fired for being for disagreeing; they get fired for being disagreeable. Correct. So if you if you disagree and you're a jerk, yeah, you're probably out. If you mm -hmm. if you disagree in a respectful, caring way, you're you're valuable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and Monica, you and I working for the same organization, one of our five um, uh, values is can candor. And, and I've seen yeah. more and more candid conversations. Yeah. You know, yeah. Kevin, you as my coach and others on the phone that have worked with me, I've been a pain in the ass lately. And I know that because I've been speaking up and, <laughs> and sharing, you know, why, why, how does this benefit the team? Explain this to me, you know, what, what's in it for us? Um, you know, tell me the benefit of this. This contradicts this, you know, and the more that I learn and I grow, the more I can, and I don't want to challenge it, right? And ask why and ask for the benefits of it. Um, but Monica, to your point, I, I really think that that value is out there. The company is standing by it. I have been, I'm normally vocal, but I'm vocal in a way that I've never been before. And it's in a way that my manager especially is respecting it. And he goes, I know where you're coming from. He can see why I'm saying what I'm saying. He can see through the way I'm saying it. And we get to the heart of the matter. And, and I appreciate that. One thing I will add to that, and, and I totally agree with you, Amy, is we have to sometimes learn to let our vulnerability down, right? Um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, roughly for me, being in an organization that I've been in this industry for banking almost 36 years now, um, I wouldn't dare challenge senior at all. And being in the organization where we're at right now, where it allows us to be candor and have that full transparency, I always have in the back of my mind, there's power in unity. Let's have that conversation. Let's have that discussion. Um, it's not what you say, it's how you deliver it. 
how you mm-hmm. present it in a, in, a, in a valuable way where mm-hmm. we can come to an agreement and mm-hmm. it's okay to disagree. Um, mm-hmm. It's just in, the, in that form way. I think Michael, you said it, is that we can present things, but if you're going to be a jerk about it um, mm-hmm. and you're not going to be fully vested in it, um, mm-hmm. you're going to have a tough time. Um, Mm -hmm. If you really are embodying the agile Mm -hmm. transformation, the agile manifesto, you're living that, you're breathing that, and you're showing that you are an example of what you want others to do within agile is Mm -hmm. is be that predominantly faithful person and ask the whys and continue moving forward. Then you Mm -hmm. have to take that vulnerability, going back to it and just let it go. You just, just get out there and just try it. Mm-hmm. The worst thing they can say is no. Right, right. And I think if you don't speak up, um, you know, and speak that, it, then it festers, right? And then it becomes, it, it, it reaches the boiling point and you have a different result with that. Um, so I think that's really important to be able to do that. And one of the coaches, and I don't remember who it was, it may have been Kevin, you know, the God that we, we've already agreed to, um, is that when speaking with, our management team or we're trying to you know challenge whatever this new norm is or whatever the case may be is really speak in a way that it addresses the outcomes you know by doing this we are affecting the team's engagement or i am seeing a decrease based on our numbers you know we can leverage all kinds of reporting um but we're seeing less communication we're you know really talk about the outcomes of certain behaviors and or directives or whatever the case may be. And I'm finding that is resonating with my audience better. Cool. Thank you. Um, let me, I'm going to uh, close it from my side and then turn it back over. Um, so uh, uh, this is what we do. We um, train and develop in long-term programs and medium-term programs, uh, enterprise coaches, transformation agents. Um, you should you should consider if you're if you're in this uh, business you should consider at least what what our training is because it's it's gonna it is making a really big difference to people and um, I'm I'm really excited about it and, and this is the kind of stuff we do you should see Michael and I together Marie can tell you Michael and I together are uh, some some of you have seen the two of us we're we're uh, we're a trip would that be a fair statement who's 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 seen Michael and I together. Were we a trip? Were we zany? Yeah, yeah. I think you guys. Uh, I think a trip is a very good adjective. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> uh, it, an awesome trip. Maybe even a better one. Yeah. I, I personally like the word and use of zany. That's an underused word these days. <laughs> I've only seen you separately, and I would still use those adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I think it's or, or guilty. I think you it what? has. I think it has gone to a slightly new level, though. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually really has. It's it's because we we had a we had about a three year break from each other, and um, you know, he wrote his book, and I uh, uh, yeah. mostly finished mine before we started together, and, and you know, it just it made a, it's, it's why we had two bodies of work to bring together because we you know it, it would have been hard to do that if we were together as partners at that point. So, you know, we are paths led us apart and then back together. So we have a lot of fun. We have more than a lot of fun. (laughs) (laughs) We are definitely dangerous. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. Really great. Thank you so much for uh, your, your great uh, attentiveness. And I could feel your, um, your the depth of that breakout really did help. I could feel how different you yeah. came back. At like uh, so, glad we did that. Thank you for thank you for hosting me. Yeah, thank you, Michael, for for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, and also, just uh, thank you to Lean Dog for sponsoring us, um, yes. and thank you to all of the attendees for for coming and joining us. From I, I noticed a couple of people from Australia and and from. All over the all over the place. So I really appreciate you guys joining us. Um, I am going to post this on YouTube, and there was a bunch of uh, really great links shared in chat. I'll put those all in the YouTube description as well. Um, probably not the LinkedIn links because that might be weird, but all of the other links I'll put in the, the YouTube. <laughs> um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, I think our scheduled uh, 
stuff is done for the night. If anyone wants to stick around and chat, I will leave the room open for a little while. So I just wanted to say, let's not forget to thank Kevin Civic, Brian Link, and of course, John Leone for making this happen and uh, keeping our wonderful group going through the, uh, hopefully the tail end and the end of these uh, COVID times. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Yep. Right on, Ken. Yep. Thank you all. Yep. Great job, guys. Thank you.